الحمد لله نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد رب شرح لصدري ويسر لأمري وحل العقدة من لسان يفقه قولي سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وزدنا علما Respected brothers and sisters in Islam our elders our qurra ulama Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh all praise and glorification is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Peace, blessings, and salutations upon our beloved Prophet, Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We thank Allah for having guided us to this deen of Islam. Says Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَمَنْ يَبْتَغِ غَيْرَ الْإِسْلَامِ دِينًا فَلَيْ يُقَبَلَ مِنْ Whomsoever desires to live a life, to follow a way, a code of life and a code of laws other than that of Islam, it will never ever be accepted, accepted of him on the day of Qiyamah. Furthermore, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has made absolutely clear to us matters of our deen. Things we need to know about Islam in order to love Islam and also having made clear to us certain very very important and serious future events that affects us in a very very big way says Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa ma faradna fil quran min shay'in Allah has not left out anything in this quran and so as we read and contemplate the quran and we experience its beauty and perfection we cannot but notice the beautiful system of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala within the Qur'an and that is the system of repetition. Certain important, crucial, essential messages in the Qur'an, Allah begins the Qur'an with these messages and Allah continues repeating them over and over and over again right up until the end of the Qur'an. So, once again, in the 70th surah of the Qur'an, which is located in the 29th juz of the Qur'an, Allah again, for the umpteenth time, Allah repeats the mentioning and description of the day of Qiyamah. In fact, in the 11 surahs, the 11 chapters in this very 29th juz, no, not a single one of these chapters is void of the mentioning of Qiyamah. In fact, three of those 11 surahs actually begins with the very mentioning of Qiyamah. Surah al Allah speaks about the day of Qiyamah as the reality, something which will definitely come to pass. And in fact, there's a surah by the name of Qiyamah which Allah starts, La uqsimu bi Qiyamah. Allah takes an oath, a qasim, by the day of Qiyamah. And then the 70th surah, which is the topic of our discussion today, and that is Surah Al-Ma'arij. Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu reports that when Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he spoke the, to, to the mushrikeen, to the mushrikeen, the Meccans, and warned them of a pending punishment, a punishment that would befall them if they do not refrain, stop the idol worshipping, if they do not turn to Islam and adopt the aqidah of Islam, that there is indeed a punishment bewaiting them that will definitely befall them. So this particular mushrik by the name of another Ibn Harith, a mushrik from amongst the elite, a mushrik considered to be a man of status and stature amongst his people. He responds and he says, Allahumma in kana hadha huwa al-haq min indik fa-amtir alayna hijaratan min as-samaa wa'itina bi'adabin alim. He responds arrogantly, ignorantly and foolishly. He says, O oh Allah, and remember the mushrikeen, they believed in Allah. They believed in a supreme being. Only thing is they committed shirk with Allah and they rejected the day of Qiyamah, life after death. But they believed in Allah. 
So he makes a dua and he says, Allahumma in kana hadha wal haq min indik. Oh Allah, if this is the truth from you, meaning if what this man, Abu Muhammad Wasallam, is saying is the truth, then you rain upon us stones from the sky or bring us a painful punishment. What a foolish dua. What an ignorant dua. A wise man would have said, Oh Allah, if this is the truth, then guide us to it. And so Allah reveals, as a response to this statement, Allah reveals the verses of Surah Al-Ma'arij. سَأَلَ سَائِلٌ بِعَذَابِ وَاكِعٍ A questioner asks, in fact, mockingly asks and requests the punishment that is going to befall. لِلْكَافِرِينَ لَيْسَ لَهُ دَافِعٍ It is going to befall those who reject and there is absolutely no one who can avert and keep away this punishment. When a force is pending and it's from the side of creation, then it is very possible for that force to be counted and overpowered. But when the force is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then no one can resist this force. So Allah says, لَيْسَ لَهُ دَافِعُ Why? مِنْ اللَّهِ because this punishment is coming from Allah. Min Allahi dil ma'arij. Allah, the one who is the possessor of the ways of ascent. Allah is the one, Allah mentions here, that facilitates the ascension of the angels up into the samawat. Subhanallah. What an amazing thing that the angels can ascend up into the seven heavens. All this by the decree and power and permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then Allah mentions this ascension, and Allah says, تَعْرُجُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ وَالرُّوحُ إِلَيْهِ The angels, Allah knows exactly how many, they ascend. وَالرُّوحُ And Allah makes a special mentioning of a special angel. وَالرُّوحُ Allah refers to him as a ruh Jibreel alayhi salatu wassalam. Jibreel, he has a special status by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For this is the angel that brings wahi to the Anbiya alayhi salatu wassalam. And Allah says these angels, they will ascend into the Samawat. And it will be on this final day. This final day where Allah unambiguously states that the duration of this day will be 50,000 years, subhanAllah. Imagine that. Now that's a long time. And 50,000 years of what? Of judgment. Of standing before Allah for reckoning. The scales will be erected. The book of deeds will be handed out. The sun will be a mile away. People will be standing in their own perspiration. And this will continue for 50,000 years. Imagine that. The duration in itself is part of the punishment. This worried the Sahaba radiallahu anhum. And they came to Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and said, Ya Rasulallah, ma atwala hadha al-yawm. O Messenger of Allah, in a worry, they said to the Prophet Allah, this is a very long day. This day is too long. Worried that they will not be able to bear this yawm, this day. Says Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, وَالَّذِي نَفْسِي بِيَدِهِ إِنَّهُ لَيُخَفَّفُ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِ حَتَّى يَكُونَ أَخَفَّ عَلَيْهِ مِنْ صَلَاةٍ مَكْتُوبَةٍ يُصَلِّهَا فِي الدُّنْيَا Indeed, this day, it will be lightened. It will be made short on a believer. To the extent that for a believer, the experience of this day will be the duration of having made two rak'ah sunnah salah in this dunya, subhanallah. A true believer has no problem. A true believer who understands and knows Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has no problem in understanding that Allah is the creator of time. Allah is the manipulator of time. Allah is the controller of time. Can vary the experience of time on two individuals in the exact same location. So for one it will be 50,000 years, for another it will be as short as the duration of salah subhanallah. May Allah make us of those, inshallah. 
Fasbir sabaran jamila. Allah continues and Allah says to Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, "So have beautiful patience in the face of the onslaughts, of the attacks against you, of the insults, of the comments, of the sarcasm. Have patience. Fasbir sabaran jamila because this day is coming. Justice will prevail. No injustice." will go unaccounted for, unreckoned. Fasbiru sabran jamila. What does sabran jamila mean? It means do not become irritated. Do not lose hope. Do not despair. Do not become discontented in the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when you complain, you may complain, but to Allah and Allah alone. That is sabran jamila, beautiful patience. إِنَّهُمْ يَرَوْنَهُ بَعِيدًا For indeed they, they the mushrikeen and the disbelievers and the rejecters of the year after, they consider it to be بَعِيدًا far, meaning something far-fetched. They don't believe in the coming of a final day. They don't believe in life after death. It is in fact inconvenient for them to do so. Because if there were a qiyamah, if there were a day of judgment to come, then it will, it will spoil the fun on this dunya. Because then it means we will be accountable. Then we have to toe the line. But if there's no qiyamah, if you put qiyamah out of our minds, then we can live as we please. And we can, we can violate the rights of others as we please. We can steamroll over whoever we wish in order to fulfill our gains and our wants and objectives. Allah says, but we, we see it to be very, very near. There's a saying in Arabic, Everything that is going to come, that is going to happen, it is near. Whether it's going to come after a thousand years or ten thousand years, the fact that it's going to come is near. Because when it actually comes, the time that it elapses will seem like a flash. Subhanallah. Just take it from ourselves. Those of you who are, are, are senior in age, how long has the years gone by? Look back. Wasn't it like yesterday when you were a young man? I can also speak a little bit now. <laughs> Wait, will came from Allah knows best. And remember, Qiyama technically starts when you die. And on the day of, of your death, it will be as if your life passed by in a flash, subhanAllah. وَنَرَاهُ قَرِيبًا So Qiyama is near. Now Allah goes into a description, a very brief description of the Samawat and a brief description of the dunya. On that day, يَوْمَ تَكُونُ السَّمَاءُ كَالْمُهْلِ on that day, the skies will take the appearance of molten copper. Ponder about this for a moment. We enjoy beautiful blue skies in Cape Town, alhamdulillah. But we also are familiar with gray clouds, very dark gray clouds. When they fill the skies, a very gloomy appearance. In fact, it can become very scary in certain places because these gray clouds, they give a dark appearance and they bring thunder and storm. Now try to imagine a sky with the appearance of molten copper, subhanAllah. وَتَكُونُ الْجِبَالُ كَالْعِهْنِ And Allah gives a description of the earth, meaning the mountains on this earth. The mountains, the rock-solid mountains, the gigantic mountains that serves as pegs of this dunya. Pegs in order to keep the earth's surface in place. On that day, the mountains will be transformed into a type of wool. A type of wool which a light wind can easily scatter, subhanAllah. What then would happen to the earth's surface? When the pegs that kept it from moving and shaking is removed. Therefore Allah says in another surah, when remember when the earth will quake its quake one earthquake in an isolated part of the world we hear about it we don't feel it what about when the entire earth 
multiple earthquakes Allahumma hafadna mankind will say what is happening now subhanallah now Allah continues back to surah al-ma'arij now Allah continues description of insan on that day when something or danger is pending somewhere the first thing we think of what is our loved ones where are my children where's my wife where's my husband where's my mother where's my father we worry about our loved ones when danger is pending on the day of qiyamah no beloved friend or family member will even worry and ask about another loved one in fact allah says in the next verse you they will actually be in view of each other they will see each other in difficulty but yet they will not have any care or concern why we jump to surah to abasa a day when a person will flee from his children son daughter he will flee from his mother father husband wife why because every individual on that day will have enough problems on his own enough problems to keep him busy to even worry about anyone else even he will run away he will flee from them and now back to suratul ma'arij not only will he free from flee from them allah says now this person this mujrim this sinner he will wish that if it could at all be possible that he could, uh, could ransom himself that he could buy himself free from the punishment bibani with who with his own children if he could he would say to allah he'd wish he could do this oh allah take my son take my daughter take all my children burn them in the fire but save me subhanallah imagine that wa akhi his wife he will say allah take my wife take my four wives burn them the wife will say take my husband some are smiling mashallah <laughs> not a problem right just making a little bit light of the heavy wa sahibatihi wa akhi and his siblings allah take them all wa fasilatihi allati tu'wi in fact the one who gave you shelter the one who protected you in this dunya it would be more likely that you would reciprocate on the day of qiyamah and give them protection and some scholars mufassirin say this refers to your mother who suckled you who kept you warm who protected you from all the dangers they could be you will say if you could you will wish to say oh allah take this person as well take my mother also burn her rather but save me in fact the mujrim will go as far to say he will wish that he could have the opportunity to say to allah oh allah the entire human race burn them all in the fire of jahannam but save me if you burn them all may that be a payment and a ransom for my freedom subhanallah imagine that imagine the extent then he will be saved allah says Kalla no ways no ways because the currency of the, uh, the year after has got nothing to do with the material wealth of this world in fact allah says in another surah will not be accepted from any one of them the entire earth filled with gold because the currency of the year after is your aqidah is your iman it is your deeds based on your taqwa on your tawakkul innaha allah says kalla innaha lava allah says nay it is the lava meaning your destination your lot is the lava what is the lava one of the seven names allah uses to refer to the fire allah refers in the quran to the fire by seven names jahannam is one sa'id is another jahim saqar Hawiyah, Hutama, and Lava. 
So scholars say that Jahannam has seven levels, seven declining levels, and each name refers to one of those levels. It says Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Laha sab'atu abwabin. Each Jahannam has seven doors. Likulli babin minum juz'un maqsum. And every door, through every door, a specific group of people will be entering through that door. Allahumma ahfadna. As if to say there is a list. This door has a list and through this door, the names on this list has to enter. Tad'u man adabar wa tawalla. So this lava will be calling out. Calling out by name those who is, are supposed to enter. Tad'u man adabar wa tawalla. Calling those who turn their backs in the dunya. Who turn their faces wa tawalla. Turn their backs and their faces away from the haq, away from Islam, away from Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the only concern during their stay in this dunya is wa jama'a fa'u'a. Was to amass, jama'a. To amass worldly wealth, whether by halal or haram means it did not matter. And then when they acquired and amassed wealth, fa'u'a, they hoarded. And they were stingy and niggardly and did not fulfill the haq of the wealth by looking after the poor. وَجَمَأَ فَعُوعًا إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ خُلِقَ هَلُوعًا Allah says because man, generally speaking, has been created with this quality, with this trait called in Arabic halu'a. What is halu'a? Allah explains and describes it in the next two verses. إِذَا مَسَّهُ الشَّرُّ Whenever any difficulty, any hardship befalls man, halu'a, jazu'a, he becomes jazu'a, he becomes irritated, he becomes annoyed, he perhaps even goes to the extent of losing hope and despair, and he becomes discontented, meaning he lacks the quality of what? Of sabr. Wa khayru. But when affluence and prosperity comes his way, manu'a, he becomes stingy. He says, leave alone, this belongs to me, this is mine. And he prohibits and prevents others from sharing in his wealth. He does not take care of the poor. He becomes like Qarun, who says and claims, innama utituhu ala ilmin min indi. Qarun, a very wealthy man in the time of Fir'aun, he claims, that this wealth has been given to me because of my knowledge, because of my intelligence. And therefore, I have sole claim to it. If you think you are intelligent, and it's because of your intelligence and business acumen, whatever else it may be, that you have acquired a certain amount of wealth, and you think that that is the basis of the amount of wealth you have, then we can show you a hundred more people other than you who are more intelligent than you, who have worked so much harder than you, but they have less than you. Because that's not the basis of wealth. The basis of wealth is Allah's decree. Allah has decided that that's the amount of wealth that you will have irrespective of what you do. So you've been given the wealth not by your own knowledge, by the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And let's just say for argument's sake, that it was your intelligence that secured you a certain amount of wealth. Who made you intelligent? Who gave you the intelligence? It all comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Illa. The verses continue. So this is man. He lacks these two essential qualities to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sabr and shukr. Because when Allah gives you, you must display shukr. And the shukr of wealth is that you look after the poor and the needy. But Allah says, Illa. All men are not like this. Alhamdulillah. Illa except. Meaning, there are those who are exempted from being like this. There are those who are exempted from lacking these two qualities of sabr and shukr. And then Allah mentions eight things. And we'll see if we can do a few of them, or perhaps even complete them all. إِلَّا الْمُصَلِّينَ Except those who make salah. Subhanallah. Those who prostrate to Allah, those who make sajda to Allah five times a day. But not just those who make salah. Allah says, 
إلا المصلين الذين هم على صلاتهم دائمون those who their salah is a rock solid in terms of punctuality دائمون there is no way a believer who is conscious who has at his full senses there is no way he's going to miss a single salah within a day guaranteed if Allah grants me life today and Allah grants me that I'm at my full senses then guaranteed inshallah as far as it's in my ability I will never ever miss a single salah that is the attitude of a believer it's like breathing salah it's like breathing when I stop breathing I die and we cannot say that alhamdulillah today today in terms of my salah I did very well because today out of the five I made four subhanallah doesn't work like that salah is a package deal you cannot say my car mashallah I'll sell you a car it runs very well it's got all three of the four tires it needs the four tires to run you need five salahs to be considered to be a musalli if you're lacking one salah of those five salahs you are considered to be a tariq salah illa al musallin alladhina hum ala salatihim daimun except those so this is the first thing and we can now put it into reverse that if you are a musalli if you are making five times daily salah then you have to check do i have sabr and shukr because making salah five times a day regularly is now supposed to give me those qualities of sabr and shukr quality number two and those who in their wealth there is a specific portion scholars mufassirin say this refers to the fard zakat and above that the sadaqa but most firstly and more specifically zakat for those who express their need and they ask so we know that they are in need and those who do not express their need no one knows that they are in need subhanallah we'll come to this point just now it is the responsibility of each and every person adult who has wealth you need to make it your responsibility to find out whether or not you are liable for zakat because if you do not pay your zakat and it's liable it becomes due it means the very moment the year passes over your wealth and zakat becomes due you are now in possession of someone else's wealth it no longer belongs to you and if you were hold it and consume it you are withholding the haq of others you are consuming and usurping the haq of others and then if you don't pay it in this dunya you will have to pay it in the akhirah and that is when you need it most you have to pay it with your deeds so make the effort brothers and sisters make it your duty your personal duty to inquire whether or not you are liable for zakat many business people don't even know that zakat is due on trading stock sometimes a person doesn't even know he may not be a businessman but he can have a position which constitute trading stock maybe he's not even a businessman all these you have these points and technicalities you have to go and make an effort to go and study the abwab the chapters of fiqh and in this regard the chapter of zakat and just by the way i'm promoting our class on wednesday we are currently busy with the chapter of zakat and then coming back to the point wal mahroom and we'll end on this point inshallah and maybe in future jumas we'll continue and finish off wal mahroom and those who do not ask there are people amongst us in fact in this very area weinberg we don't know but in this very area there are people living in our midst that go at night they go without food we don't know this subhanallah it may even be your neighbor you don't know it is only on the ramadan the end of ramadan when we start going around to see who the people are who need parcels when we come to learn of these people subhanallah that are in need living in our midst may allah forgive us 
for enjoying three square meals a day and not thinking about those who do not have. Wal Mahroom tells me that they do not ask, meaning they are not known, which means we have to go and make an effort to find out who they are. Because how else would we be able to give them if they are not asking? It means we do some, make some effort to go and see where are those people who are in need who are not asking, subhanallah. Once again, may Allah forgive us. Because Allah says in another surah, وَلَا تُسْأَلُنَّ يَوْمَ إِذِنْ عَنِ النَّعِيمِ Allah is definitely going to ask you about the na'im, about the delicious food that you eat because this verse came down just regarding that. When the Prophet of Allah and Sayyidina Uwan and Abu Bakr, when they came out, the Prophet of Allah came out at a time when most people was, were asleep. And he found Sayyidina Umar and he found Sayyidina Abu Bakr also outside. And he asked them, what are you doing here? So they both said to him that we are here because there's no food in our house. We are hungry, so we came out to see where we can find some food. Subhanallah. What did the Prophet of Allah say? The very same thing brought me out as well. Subhanallah. The most beloved of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah is showing us. It doesn't mean that if you have, that you are favored by Allah. Sometimes those who don't have are the most favored by Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so long and short of the story is they went to an Ansar's house. Eventually he presented them with a, with a meal, some beautiful dates, and he roasted a, a, a goat. And then as they were eating, the Prophet of Allah said to them, وَلَا تُسْأَلُنَّ يَوْمَ إِذِنْ عَنِ النَّعِيمِ You are going to be asked by Allah definitely about this na'im that you are enjoying. So the point again is how can we enjoy our meals at night? And we are not involved in feeding others who don't have. The haqq of our wealth is that. That if we have, we must have the worry and concern of those who don't have. And I'll finish off with one other verse in the very same juz. Where the inmates of Jahannam or Jannah asks the inmates of Jahannam, مَا سَلَكَكُمْ فِي سَقَرْ Why is it that you have been driven to the fire? What drove you? What caused you to be in the fire? And their response will be, قَالُوا لَمْ نَكُمْ مِنَ الْمُصَلِّينَ The first thing is, the very first point we mentioned as well. لَمْ نَكُمْ مِنَ الْمُصَلِّينَ We were not of those who made salah. Salah miftahu al-jannah. You cannot go to jannah unless you have the key. The key is salah. لَمْ نَكُمْ مِنَ الْمُصَلِّينَ And what was the second thing mentioned? وَلَمْ نَكُمْ نُطْعِمُ الْمِسْكِينَ and we were not of those who fed the poor, subhanallah. Not feeding the poor is cited as a reason and a cause for burning and entering the fire of Jahannam. Allahumma ahfadna. May Allah make us of those who make the intention here and now, inshallah, that we're going to get involved in feeding the poor on a regular basis, inshallah. May Allah guide and protect us. Wa akhir da'wana anilhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.